Hi guys, thank you so much for joining this episode of RCM Presents. Today I'll be speaking to Michelle DeJordan. She's a super accomplished uh, businesswoman, a uh, sidepreneur turned full-timepreneur, and one of the purposes in her life is to helping other women, especially women who might look like you or I, find purpose and meaning in their life, and of course, finding their passion. I feel like we've all, at some point, questioned how we would get there how to start addressing finding your purpose and passion. So I hope this comes at a really timely, timely space for you. And she should be hopping on, hello. Hello, my dear, how are you? I'm doing really well, how are you today? I am doing fantastic. Wonderful, I love that red lip, that is so pretty. I figured I'd make my lips pop a little bit tonight. It's Friday night, right? <laughs> It's Friday night, and even if you're having a party inside, at home, you might as well have a party somewhere, right? Exactly, exactly, and you're right. It's inside. I am still quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> they say safety first, safety first, but I just want to thank you so much for agreeing to do this live with me. Um, I know it's a pretty heavy topic but you are such an accomplished and just amazing, lovely human being. So I'm just really glad that we're able to connect and hopefully you can drop some gems on the rest of us as we're all on our journeys. Well, thank you so much for having me. I am certainly honored and it is a pleasure to be able to share with you. Thank you for the invite. I know we went back and forth and it, it is just an honor for me to share um, with you tonight. So I'm really looking forward to it. And this topic is so appropriate um, for mm -hmm. where we are in life and where we are in society. So looking forward to unpacking some information with you. Thank you so much. I'm just making sure that I'm pinning the topic for today, which is finding your purpose and passion. Um, you and I went back and forth because you're a very busy, busy lady, even through our quarantine pre-post. Um, and you also have a unique schedule in that I don't know if I, you want to share with the group, but you have one day a week that you dedicate to golf, which I found yeah. amazing. Yes, yes, yes. So what I find is I don't believe in balance in life um, because when you are an entrepreneur and you are pursuing life's purposes, there is no balance, right? Um, that doesn't mean that you don't do the things you enjoy. That just means that when I'm in that moment, I'm focused on what it is that I'm doing. So I'm very um, uh, passionate about finding the time to really reset my own mind and reset, you know, who I am as an individual. And golf is one of my passions. Um, I've always competed with myself. I don't compete with my sisters and my brothers. I am my own competitor. I want to be a better version of myself every single day. And it's something about being on that golf course and trying to hit that ball that really reminds me and helps me in that level of competition. But it also clears my mind. Um, so, yes, Tuesdays is golf day. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Do you usually do like a full 18 holes or are you just like going to the driving range and hitting the ball until you just can't anymore? So it depends. Um, I typically meet a group of ladies on um, Tuesdays and we'll do either nine mm -hmm. or 18 depending upon schedules. Um, and, um, and then we actually go out one or two Saturdays out of the month, but it just depends on the schedule. Typically it's nine holes cause we're going late in the evening. Um, but if we can get 18, so this past Tuesday, we were able to get 18 in and had a really great time. That sounds wonderful. I bet the weather was great as well. You're based in Atlanta, correct? I'm in Atlanta and the weather was beautiful. We thought it was going to rain, but it ended up being about 74 degrees with an amazing breeze. So it was beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, so just kind of jumping into our topic today, finding your purpose and passion. Um, I just want to say sometimes when I'm scheduling these, the other person says, oh, maybe we could talk about this. And they send me a host of, host of ideas. But the fact that you are so uh, direct, you're like, let's talk about finding your purpose and passion. Um, I was like, okay, she's ready. <laughs> and I also felt like, oh my, I hope that I'm the qualified person to be able to have this conversation. Um, but if you don't mind just sharing a little bit of your background and how you got to the space and the place that you are now. 
Well, listen, here's what I believe. And here's what I, I, is so interesting about life is life happens to all of us. And we all have defining moments that really take us from point A to B, B to C, C to D. And so mm -hmm. sometimes what happens is people think they're going to wake up one morning and automatically be smack dab. And I'm country. I'm from Alabama. So they're going to be in the middle of um, their purpose and their passion. And you know what? It just doesn't happen that way at all times. Everybody has their process. And you yeah. can't go beyond that process, right? Because we are made in that process. So I remember being, you know, 20 years old and homeless, right? Sleeping in a car, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, cleaning up at the local gas station in Houston, Texas, and trying to figure out life. Um, I remember going through amazingly hard financial struggles and mm -hmm. trying to figure out where that next meal was going to come from, right? But my entrepreneurship mm -hmm. birthed when I started going through a divorce. And it was in that process that I realized that, you know what, it's sink or swim. I've got two yeah. amazing daughters that at that time were seven and nine, and they were dependent. They were looking at mom to make sure, were we going to be okay? Um, mm -hmm. And that's what really birthed my entrepreneurial journey. Um, but I do believe that each component of that journey really leads us from A to purpose, from A to passion, from A to destiny, if we will allow it. And so that's been my journey, right? It's been a matter of collective yeses and allowing those collective yeses to lead me to the next place. So when you're talking about those collective yeses, <laughs> how do you deal with some of those, uh, I'll call them sporadic no's or difficult no's? <laughs> well, here's what happens with the no, right? Because what I've learned to do is in the process of the no, is to understand sometimes that no is not personal. Sometimes that no is for my protection. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I got a little yeah, I'll take go throat. drink some water, please. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Sometimes that no is for my protection. And we don't realize it at that time, right? Because sometimes we see that no as a block or a stumbling block mm -hmm. that's keeping us from getting to our purpose. But there have been times when I look back mm -hmm. at that no, and I am so grateful for that no. I am so grateful that I learned how to pivot in that no. And sometimes so many people, they, 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 you have to adjust to what that no is. Life is going, no one is exempt from life. And life mm -hmm. is going to throw you some amazing curveballs, right? Yeah. I wrote a book. I'm just going to flash it up. Yeah, it's sure. Wa it's called Water Walker. It's called mm -hmm. Water Walker. And I mentioned my book because when we think about the story of Peter who walks out on water, we assume that when he walked out on water, it was just peaceful ocean. But it wasn't. It was in the middle of a storm. Everything was going crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. every it was like the most inopportune time. And so what I know about a no is that that no is going to lead me. If I keep moving and if I don't quit, that mm -hmm. no will build a resiliency on the inside of me that will mm -hmm. absolutely get me to the yes that is truly designed for me. Um, yeah. And if it's a no, then I just believe that you know what? There's a, we attract what we are supposed to attract if we're putting yeah. the right things out in the universe. And I love the protection that we have when we only invite those things in that are, you know, designed to produce and carry us to our next level. So what is a no? Um, my second component of that, though, if I may, about a no is sure. a no simply means you are not the one. I remember when I opened my <laughs> first franchise store, Edible Arrangements, and um, Edible Arrangements International gave me a list of uh, companies that I had to go through to say that I was, you know, worth a certain amount of money. And I remember calling 
And it was something about each of those calls. Either they told me no, or I just didn't feel a connection with the mm -hmm. individuals that I talked to. So I got a lot of no's until I got to that 10th one. And I almost didn't call that 10th one, but I did because the other no's just meant you weren't the one. Like you just weren't, and that's okay. But when I called that 10th person is when I got asked, and it was the yes that I needed in the way that I needed. And so you can't allow the word no to paralyze you or to stop you. That no should propel you to get to that yes. I just got to get to the yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm also a believer that sometimes in all of those no's, you're just perfecting your pitch. You're getting uh, smarter. You're actually becoming more connected with your product, your offering, yourself, you know? And most importantly, you know, you're getting more connected with your purpose. Once you can see clearly where one starts and the other one ends or the other one starts, that's when you're, you're, you're like in a zone. You know, a lot of the times we just kind of blend all these things together. And that doesn't really lead you to the place where you want to go. I agree. I agree. I agree. So, so go ahead. Yes, go ahead. No, 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 please. No. No, so I was going to agree that um, it doesn't lead you to, and sometimes that no is because we haven't defined who we are. We haven't defined, sometimes it's because our posture stinks. Like mm -hmm. when you step out and you've got amazing ideas and, you know, entrepreneur and purpose, your posture should reflect just a level of confidence because people want to do business with people that are confident about who they are and what they are, what they bring yeah. to the market. And so sometimes it's, it's helping you to perfect and strengthen your posture so that when you come back again, there's a strength. And I think people see that confidence and that strength. When I called that 10th person, you know what he said? He said, I don't know anything about you, but from our conversation, I believe you will be successful. So I have wow. to say that those no's, they strengthened my posture to the point where I was like, no, listen, somebody's going to tell me yes today, and this is why. And that is what those no's keep doing is if you allow it, if you allow yeah. it, they will strengthen Compared to you. Taking it and personally. Right, it helps you build. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it helps you build who you are. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to finding your purpose and passion, where do you think a person should start? Do you start first at like, let me clarify what my purpose is, or do I start with my passion? I say you start with the things, you start with you. You start with, what have you done? Where have you succeeded? What mm -hmm. accolades have you received? Sometimes you got to go back to high school and say, you know, were you voted? What were you voted? You know, some people were voted most likely to succeed. Some people were, you know, what, where did you excel? And really start a skills inventory of the things that you are and where it leads you. Like you would never see, you know, someone, uh, when I owned Edible Arrangements, they said, you are so creative. And I'm like, no, it, I am not creative created. My passion is business and strategy. And I just found where I could make the margins that I wanted to in that franchise. And so you got to be clear about who you are. And I think that's where it starts. But here's what I also believe. I think mm -hmm. if you start with a passion, it will lead you uh, to your purpose. You don't always automatically yeah. walk into purpose. When I think about when I started, you know, 20, 20 something years ago, it wasn't a purpose of building entrepreneurs and coaching and developing entrepreneurs to succeed in business. That wasn't my passion. My mm -hmm. passion at that time was I owned an HR consulting practice and I love the field of HR. I can imagine doing that today, right? But each of those, again, yeses will lead you to where you're going. The problem is, or the challenge that so many people have is, they just don't start. So they spend a lot of time in their head trying right. to figure out what is my passion? What is my purpose? And they don't start anything because they become paralyzed with the excessive analysis. At what point do you think a person should get out of their head or get out of their own way? 
I, I have my own theories about it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> right now. Like, yeah. get out of your own way and do something. You will never figure out where something will lead you to if you don't start somewhere. And yeah. so many people, I, you know, I've been jokingly called the midwife because I am known to push people into purpose and destiny because so many people get stuck and they get stuck on the most frivolous stuff. Like, yeah. what color is my brand? And they will spend months contemplating mm -hmm. what color, I don't care what color is your brand, roll it out. Done yeah. is better than perfect. So start now. Start with whatever you think it is, with whatever that skill is that you can um, um, make a profit on or, or that will lead you. Start with something and that something will begin to grow and expand and flourish and it may take you into something else. It may lead you down a different path. But if you never start, you will never know now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give a moment. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I agree you should start now. I think that, you know, start now, make the mistakes on the road, fix it late, like fix it as you go. Like people want to also be a part of that journey. You know, I, I think if, if I could go back and think of the first version of my website or the first version of my labels or the first version, I would hide, literally hide under the covers because I don't want to see it again. But the reality is, is like, that was the place where I started. That was before I knew all of the other things and I just went through dealing with the nose, dealing with, you know, not being able to articulate as clearly what it is that I was trying to accomplish or worse, not having my purpose as solidified as, as, as I thought it could be looking forward. So... I appreciate that. I just want to give a moment. Does anyone have any questions you want to ask uh, Michelle as we keep going? And uh, I'm going back and forth asking all the ones I have. I'll keep a little room there. Let's see if anyone wants to pop in. Don't be shy, guys. This is a really great opportunity. She's here. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Eh, well, I'll keep going. If you feel like dropping in a question, you can do some in the question box or just throw it in the feed. We'll go through it as we go. We still have a lot of time left. So, Michelle, you've had this entire life experience. You've overcome so much. If there was one piece of advice that you could give um, a, a person, you know, male, female, at any stage in their life, like what should they you know, like what should they do if they have a passion but don't know what to do? next um if you have a passion and don't know what to do next get the help that you need one of the best things that has um, been very instrumental in my career is having mentors and having a coach um mm -hmm. whether it's a life coach a business coach someone to really help you get what's in your head out and into paper and able to put it in a strategy that gives you execution points. Um, I've had a tagline for the last 20 years. It worked in my HR business. It works in my business consulting business. We bridge the gap between knowing and doing. We bridge mm. the gap between knowing and doing. And so what happens sometimes is people know and they have this idea and a concept but they don't know how to bring that concept to life so that yeah. it is something that can be executed upon. And mm -hmm. um, get a coach, get someone, get information to help you. And guys, listen, information is a dime a dozen, right? You can go to Google, you can go this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Don't just look for information, look to connect with transformation. Because I, anybody can give you information, but if they truly can't transform what you have into something that's workable, something that makes sense, then it's not going to be helpful for you as well. So that would be, you know, my first step is to really find a coach, um, uh, someone that is, you know, don't, don't get a relative, <laughs> don't get your best buddy, but really find someone that has a, a base in business 
and development and passion and life mm -hmm. and results oriented that can truly help you get out of your head onto paper to something that you can see and move forward with. Um, and, and that would be my first thing. My second thing that I would say um, along those lines is, as you are finding that mentor, as you are finding that coach, find you um, uh, something to read. We know that leaders are readers. Um, yeah. Realize that you know what you know and also mm -hmm. be aware of knowing what you don't know. And so sometimes it's a skills inventory and being very honest with yourself about what you don't know. And then read, um, think and grow rich. Um, everything is figure outable. I mean, there's so many amazing titles of books that are out there to help you grow, expand your mindset. Because as you um, keep things in your head, you start fighting that battle internally that maybe yeah. this isn't a good idea. Maybe this isn't what I need to do. Maybe this isn't. And you need the stretching of, of, of people who have high belief, high faith mm -hmm. that can really stretch you and stretch your mind to get you to that next level of thinking. Um, um, and really then taking a look at that. Those would be the two things. Start to read, look at what you're reading, and develop a game plan with a coach, a mentor, someone um, that can execute on what's in, what's in here. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I feel like, especially as I've been on my journey, opening up my mind through reading, reading a wide array of books, sometimes not just all business books, has been also very, very healing and opening of just a completely new space within myself. Um, and to, to your second point about like finding coaches, finding mentors, I have several mentors. And sometimes I go to my different mentors for different things. Um, and I think it has definitely helped my personal career, my person, uh, myself as a person. Um, and two, if you decide to find a, a coach or someone who you don't know, this is for some of the people who are watching, there are so many uh, websites and resources out there to help you find coaching. Even on Instagram, there are so many coaches on here who are willing and, and able. Michelle, there's another person here who's available to you. Um, this is another resource. And then there are other groups too. Um, there's, uh, I think we're familiar both with Boss Bay, but there are so many groups and organizations out there that have very capable people that can help you structure and organize some of those thoughts. So I think we do have a question here and it says, any recommendations on finding mentors or coaching when you don't know folks uh, on the industry or in the industry? Yeah, and I think, uh, I think you just answered that question, yeah. And, and the other thing I would do is research. Um, look at who's mm -hmm. in the industry and really, you know, do some research to find that coach, um, 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 what you need and, and how. So um, taking the time to really, and you, you should research anyway to know um, who's out there, who's a part of your industry, who's a part of your market. Um, and then mm -hmm. depending upon who you're looking for and what you're looking for, find a search, get your, re, you know, do the referrals, make sure you do your research that you're finding somebody that is sound enough um, and well versed in the industry that you're looking for. And I think that's where you can find um, if you're doing your research, the person that's a match for you. Um, but sometimes it doesn't have to be somebody in your industry. Um, a good mm -hmm. business coach, there are principles that um, work um, in every single business, um, there are principles. So, you know, for me personally, as a, as a business coach, um, and I've, you know, consulting practice, I've owned a franchise, um, a, a coaching business now, um, and working on some other things, you can find, um, that sometimes it's that broad array of experience that can also be helpful for you as well. Very, very true. We have another question here. Hi, Scarlin. Um, any tips and tricks on best managing your time and the effort to finding your purpose and solidifying your passion? And she does agree that the time is now. 
So if you don't manage your time, your time will manage you. So mm -hmm. you've got to then be very particular about your time and very particular about time wasters. Um, so for me, what I have to do is I start my morning early and I've always started my day early. Mm -hmm. I have to have a time to dump. I have to have a time to reprogram. I have to have a time to feed myself. I can't feed anybody else from an empty mm -hmm. pitcher. So I have to have a time where I am focused on me and mm -hmm. providing the self-help, the self-care, the, you know, all of the things that I need as a mother, a new grandmother, as a woman, um, as a busy woman in life. Um, because if you're in that hustle and constantly, you know, we hear grind, 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 then it becomes exhausting. And so you've got to have self-care. So I say start in the morning, mm -hmm. make it a habit. Um, I did a live um, a couple of days ago, Tuesday night, on the importance of habits. Your habits mm -hmm. will be the distinction between success and failure. And Absolutely. time management is one of those habits that you will have to manage in order to find success in entrepreneurship. That means um, to answer as I go in, to answer and see the next question, if you're working a nine to five and you've got a plan A that is paying your mm -hmm. bills now, and that is what I truly recommend. Like if you don't have um, a substantial, if you're, entrepreneur op opportunities is not ready for you to go full-time, don't quit your job, right? On your job and grow your business until you are ready to leave that nine to five. But what does that mean? That means I've got to have effective time management. That means I've got to wake up, do my, you know, my, my moment, um, whether it's my affirmations, it's my reading, um, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of that, 10 to 15, my prayer time, my meditation time, um, feeding into myself. Um, you, that means that on Sundays, I'm on Buffer, yeah. which is who I use, scheduling my content out for the week. That means mm -hmm. that at the end of the month, like I'm doing this weekend, I'm planning what my business will look like for the month of June and what I'm going to roll out and the products that I'm going to sell because mm -hmm. now I've got to take advantage of all. So you've got to work the moments that you have. I am a fan of a planner. I still use mm -hmm. a paper planner. I love the calendars on the computer and the, the uh, phones and all of that, but I'm a paper girl because I can plan out Every in 15 minute segments, I need to know I am planning, you know, grandmama time. I am planning TV time, which I don't do a lot of TV. Um, mm -hmm. I plan that time because if you don't plan that time, that time will get away from you. And before you know it, it's gone. And so it's mm -hmm. so important. So, yes, it is possible to be successful as an entrepreneur and to have a full-time job but that means that you have to be very cognizant of what your schedule is what you can and cannot do and you have to put in place the tools to put your business on automation right you've got to know yeah. how to automate your business how to make it simple for you so that you can work mm -hmm. um, that job and run your business really honest she said I love the I know to give it. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're unpacking a lot tonight, and I'm really glad that we are. Thank you so much for your honesty. I'll say that again for the umpteenth time. Um, you know, you, you only have so much time uh, throughout the day. You have only so much time in a lifetime. But having conversations like this gives people the power to, to make the decision for themselves. I, I think I question, um, my question for you is, when did you decide, like, and this is where I should change my habits? Or this is where I pick up better habits? My bank account made that decision for me. Fair to say. <laughs> Honest. If your mm -hmm. bank account doesn't drive you to create the life that you want, then mm -hmm. you really don't want it, right? Yeah. Sometimes we get really comfortable with where we are 
and with the things that we have. And that is absolute nothing wrong with that. But you've got to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. then and say, I'm comfortable. Because mm -hmm. there's a different mindset that goes with entrepreneurship and there's a push. Mm -hmm. And there, it, when you get in a phase of wanting to build wealth and wanting to build legacy, mm -hmm. you cannot afford to sit and twiddle your thumbs and be comfortable. You yeah. have to push to that next level. Um, and so um, that's what drives it for me is when I realize that when I'm when my habits are good and I'm focused, mm -hmm. the result is I get the things that I desire. I get the things that mm -hmm. I want. I get the things that I'm working for. Um, yeah. um, faith without works. I'm a believer, and I, you know, but faith without mm -hmm. works. And so I see so many people saying, "I got faith, and I'm gonna wait," and they do nothing. It doesn't yeah. work that way. There is a system that works and it's, 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 you have to put action with that faith. And so mm -hmm. that's where it becomes, um, um, it comes into play. And so, you know, uh, old school me says early bird catches the worm. You got to get up. You got to make it happen. You got to move. Right. Um, and, mm -hmm. and so that's what I do. That's what shapes those habits. And when I look back, you can look back now over the last 30 days and what you have today is a result of the habits that you put in place over the last 30 days mm -hmm. and so if you don't like it that means you've got to look at where you had time wasters uh social i love, love social media but you can scroll 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 all day long and if you're not careful two three four hours will be gone and yeah. those are two, three, four hours that you could be writing your blog or working on your podcast or, you know, mm -hmm. design a product or whatever it is, is your business idea. That's your time to be doing that. And so when I see people say, I don't have time to run my business, I have to ask, what are you doing? And let's do an inventory. I just gave a group um, uh, 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 an assignment to take mm -hmm. the next um, 40, not 40 days, I think I told them the next 15, 20 days, and mm -hmm. really keep a journal of what is, where are they spending their time? Because if you're spending your time in places that's not producing the life that you desire, you're getting the, you're getting the result of what you are doing. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be vulnerable and say, especially in my business, I went through about a six month period where nothing was moving positively. And, you know, I could say, oh, at the time it was my job. Oh, it's my job. Oh, it's this one. It's that one. No, the reality is the, mis the issue there, the misalignment was me. I didn't want to get out of my own way. I didn't want to develop better habits. I didn't want to address the fact of like, okay, this is costing me something. Why am I not putting in the work to yield some of the results that are positive? So it's okay to just say, hey, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone else is out there and you're questioning, it's okay to say it's you, but you can, you know, wake up tomorrow, wake up early, get your notebook and start writing down things that you're passionate about and addressing the problem. So we have another yep. question here yep. and it says, I've been in my own is way. there such, you've been in your own way too? <laughs> uh, is there such a way? Oh, absolutely. We've all been there. It's okay to face it. I think it's better that you face it and get to the next stage than just continue to blame everyone else for, for that challenge. So we have another question here by Queen Sharp, and it says, is there such a thing as a bad business idea? I love that. Um, in fact, I wrote um, an uh, article for a magazine, and it's on my web website. You're welcome to download it. It's a free download on my website, michelledajohnson.com. There's also a worksheet that goes along with it um, that talks about, is your idea viable? Um, mm -hmm. And um, the truth of the matter is, I won't say a bad idea. The question is, um, is, it a, is it a business or is it a hobby? And that's mm -hmm. typically the question that people have to ask themselves is, 
Um, is this something that I'm looking to make money with? Is this something that I'm looking to um, build wealth and financial with? Or is this something that, you know, I just want to make 20, 30 bucks here or there, 100 bucks here or there, and that's it. So you've got mm -hmm. to decide the goal of your business. Um, sometimes what happens, though, is we develop these ideas in our own head, and they sound like amazing ideas. The next question is, is there a market for your idea? So if mm -hmm. I've got an idea and it's great, but there's no market for it, then it's probably not a great idea right now, right? Now, mm -hmm. you can create a demand for your idea. That's what Edible Arrangements did. They were new on the market. They created a demand for fruit on a stick and it became a household name. But it's got to be a powerful idea to create that level of a demand. So you've got to mm -hmm. really look at that idea and say, do other people want what I'm selling? And mm -hmm. how do you do that? Research, market research, market research, market research. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. So many people start their businesses and they don't do the research. Um, ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, when I started Edible Arrangements, we um, I opened the first store in the state of Alabama, the first store in Nashville, Tennessee, right? And so it was unheard of. It was a new market. It was a new concept. This was 20, 2006. Um, it was a new concept. So when I started, Started it, I had a list of about 10 questions and I would go out in the public to the malls to, you know, networking events. I would go and ask if you could have this, 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 and this, would you? If this was this, would you? And that's what you need to do. Take that concept mm -hmm. and pitch it to the public before you put money into it. And if the yeah. public doesn't embrace it, and guys, this is what I love you have access to over 3 billion people on social media. When mm -hmm. I started Edible Arrangements, Facebook and Instagram didn't exist. So now you can pitch your idea to an amazing audience of people, get feedback, and really determine, is this something people care about? And let me yeah. say this as a side note. If you're in business and you're trying to figure out what product to roll out next, do mm -hmm. the same thing. Ask yes. questions of your captive audience to see what do they want? What do they desire? What are they looking for? Mm -hmm. What will they pay for? Because it can mm -hmm. be a great idea, but if nobody's going to pay for it, then it's just an idea. So that's Absolutely. what I would encourage you is to um, do your research and make sure it's something that people are going to buy. Thank you for sharing that. I think, um, uh, Something I learned earlier this year, just from another woman who's also a business owner, um, she went from basically having no product to rolling out a pre-sale that led her to now being shopped and being available in all Nordstrom's, in all Nordstrom stores. And you could say to yourself, how did she do that? She did exactly what you recommended on this call. She did her research. She started her social media accounts. She began building an audience and she built a business asking people what they wanted. So there wasn't a day that she wasn't polling her audience as it continued to grow. Do you like leather pants or do you like, you know, jeans? Do you like this? Do you like these colors? So she tailored her business to a group of people who were spread out across not just America, but the world. And she was able to launch in Nordstrom online and then in store and sold out in all locations, basically within a 48 hour basis. Um, and I know some people could say, oh, well, that happened to her because maybe she has X background or this or that. No, she just listened to her audience. I have launched products that were like not successful. And who is there to blame me? Because I didn't ask anybody. I just thought, I like it. I use it. That's not a rationale for you to launch an entire product or to stock an entire line of products. Mm -mm. It's not. I, I listened to an interview that someone did with Tyler Perry and they asked him, mm -hmm. why do you do the movies that you do? And he said, because my customer wants them. Okay. My customer buys them. My customer watches them. Mm -hmm. And he's, it's his market. Like him or not, like the market or not, like his movies or not, doesn't matter. He doesn't has matter. found his fan base and mm -hmm. they support him. 
And that's what you have to do is find that base and see if there's support for what you're pitching. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, thank you. She said, awesome. So I think we have about 20 minutes left on the call. I feel like we could go down so many avenues. But earlier, uh, maybe about 15 minutes ago, you mentioned that you take time out of your day to make space for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the reasons I started doing this IG Live is because I'm very curious about how people care for themselves, how you practice self-care, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you have a, a nine to five job, whether you are doing anything else from what I would do every day. I'm just curious. So when did you start practicing self-care, one? And two, why, uh, what results have you seen as you develop a habit of caring for yourself? So, um, I have a, um, I have a very high, um, uh, work ethic and can manage multiple things. So, um, I'm really off the spectrum in, in certain areas and what I can do. Um, my, my tolerance of stress and pressure and, you know, all of that is very, mm -hmm. very, very high. Um, but because of that, I have to unwind. So, one of the things that I started, um, actually when my kids were very young, um, was travel. I am mm -hmm. a fan of travel. I love traveling. I love exploring different cultures. And so I'm not big on person. So I've, I've forgotten my kids' birthdays a couple of times. I've, I'll forget stuff like that. I know, I know. <laughs> Um, it, it, you're phone, honest about it. <laughs> you're honest about it. That's fine. That. Yeah. No, mom. Is you don't love them any less. <laughs> so, um, so one of the things I decided, and one of the things I did was, um, when they were young, we started a. Listen, I, I'm probably not. I'm not big on Christmas gifts. I'm not big on birthday <laughs> gifts. But what we will do is a two week vacation every year. And my kids would select the place. Um, it had to have historical and cultural value. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted fun time, but also museum and, you know, exploring culture um, um, as well. And so we went on some amazing two-week vacations um, as they were growing up. Um, we've continued that. I love to vacation. I love to get away. Um, Mm -hmm. The beach always calls me. The water um, is always something for me. So finding that time to unwind, the, 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 the biggest part of it is listening to your body, listening to yourself and realizing when you've reached your tolerance and your level. I know my mm -hmm. body. And so what I've, what, I've, what I've started doing even more in the last few years is giving in to that and saying, this is my moment to rest. And so even when I feel like I need to push a little harder, or I've got a deadline and I really need to, what I find is that I'm not as sharp mentally, I'm not as focused as I need to be when I don't get the rest that I need. Um, and so um, it's really finding that time. Sometimes for me, it's just a book. And you're right, not a business book, not a, you know, but I, I just my fun reading where I can, I've traveled so much in my mind through reading books. Um, and so it's, you know, finding a good romance or a, a good mystery or thriller or something like that to just really escape from the business world. Um, you have to put those things in place and know when you need it and when you need to push to the next level. And that's why I say it's no balance. It's about being in whatever moment that you are in and enjoying that moment to the fullest. Um, and, and so that's what I've learned to do is to trust mm -hmm. my body, to trust my instincts and to realize that this is that time that I need to step away, that I need to, you know, I, I need to, I need to refresh so that my thoughts are sharp, so that I'm hearing, you know, and getting the creativity that I need to really push to the next level. Um, and, and it's listening, it's, it's having that self-care. And, and here's a part of it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm this, this past year, 2019, um, I watched at least three or four of my really close friends pass away from heart attack, from stroke, so um, and from other 
things. Um, I, I see, you know, some of that. And even as we are in the middle of a pandemic, we know that a lot of the factor is those underlying health conditions that have been detrimental um, to some individuals who have lost their life. And it's, it's heartbreaking, right? Mm -hmm. And so now um, there has to be a focus on wellness. There has to be a focus on rejuvenating yourself and drinking your water and, you know, doing mm -hmm. the things that are necessary to keep your body healthy while you are still growing your business and, you know, putting on your superwoman cape or superman cape and conquering the world. And I definitely want you to do all of that. But I also want you to find balance. I want people to travel. I want people to enjoy life. I want people to hug on their family, right? I, I don't want to work really, really hard, hustle and grind and build this legacy mm -hmm. and this wealth. And then I don't get to enjoy my kids growing up or I don't see my grandbaby take her first steps, or I don't, you know, whatever, then it's not worth it for me, right? So yeah. that's where that self-development uh, and that personal um, sense of making sure I'm balanced, uh, that's not my word, making sure that I have, I have self-care um, as I do the things that I do. And all of that is so important for you to take that two weeks to say, I'm going to separate myself from the hustle and bustle to rejuvenate yourself, right? I, I know some people say that they practice self-care every day because, you know, you, you might have difficulty managing stress in certain areas of your life or it's just too much chaos happening all around you. But yeah. you finding the space for yourself is just the most important part about self-care. And it's you know, wonderful that you're able to have that experience with your daughters and, and have the, the time of self-development, family development, um, that you may be the first person I've heard to think of it that way. It's a really wonderful uh, experience and memories, I think, that you have. Yeah, it is. It has built some amazing memories. And so we'll get together and do their adults now, but we'll talk about, do you remember when? And we'll, you know, go back to some of those trips that we were on, some of those places that we visited and... Um, it's just, it's just great. It, it has built so many memories. So that's wonderful. Uh, as an avid traveler myself, I travel a lot. My family, we've all kind of either traveled together or just always embarked on these journeys. Where is the strangest place you've ever been? And where's the most memorable place you've ever visited? Um, oh my goodness. I, now you got me stumped. Um, I, I don't, I, you know, I tend to, I tend to take away a piece of me. Um, uh, I tend to leave a piece and, and bring a piece back of every single place that I go to. Um, I would say that um, one of my favorite places um, and most memorable is a little, a little, um, um, I, I, it's not even a, a town, but it's a, um, um, God, the words escape me right now, but it's in a, a place called Katali that okay. is in the northern regions of um, Nairobi, um, Kenya. Okay. Okay. And um, it's, a, it's a place that housed an orphanage. And um, I, I love mission trips. And um, in this orphanage were quite a bit of kids. I mean, tons of kids and um, disease had came through and really robbed a lot of the adults, especially the male um, mm -hmm. adults um, through that village. It's a village. That's what I was trying to say. And I planted there a eucalyptus tree, um, which um, the, um, the, the village there and the lady who ran the um, orphanage encouraged uh, uh, me to, but I planted a eucalyptus tree, which was a way of cleansing for me um, mm -hmm. and a way of leaving a piece of me in that amazing village. And it was just mm -hmm. one of the most memorable places, I think, for me is, um, is realizing how and what and being able to see the eyes of some of the babies and the kids and loving on them and and experiencing life through their eyes and stuff like that. So I would say that is probably one of my most memorable. Um, as far as, um, you know, I take the, 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 the uh, Caribbean, I tend to like, you know, Jamaica, the 
um, mm -hmm. uh, Dominican. Um, Belize is my new favorite um, place. Um, and um, really? so my family's from Belize. Shut I was up. just in Belize. I am so serious. <laughs> what is, so, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, I've decided that in 2021, um, that's my retirement um, place. I'm in Belize. Have you so, decided like what town? I, I have a list of four places that I'm looking. Um, yeah. And in fact, I think I'm going to go in October to look a little bit more. Amber, Amber, Amber. Oh, Vegas Key. Amber Vegas Key. Key, yeah. Beautiful. It's on that list. Um, where are you? From? Oh, my goodness. This is, we have to talk <laughs> offline. Yes, we will. This is amazing. <laughs> I will, is, I, whatever I can do to help, I will help. I hope is that you're going to join you. Maybe. I believe that everything is meant, everything is meant to be, right? So there is a reason why you and I connected. There's a reason why it took us forever playing phone tag with each other. Um, everything happens for a reason. I mean, and you're going to retire I, I, in Belize and it'll be fabulous. I am like, I am, I know this is not the place for it, but you guys, when you talk about passion and purpose, um, for me, I believe that whatever God blesses me with, um, it's for community. It's for, you know, yes, I'm blessed. Yes, my children will be blessed, my grandchildren, all of that kind of stuff. But there's mm -hmm. also a component that has to encompass more than just me. Yeah. And um, and so I'm excited to find my place in, um, you know, I do a lot of community work. I do, I, I know, uh, Jamie, I think um, I'm, I do a lot of community work. I do a lot of you know, nonprofit work. I'm working with an organization now where we've been feeding the elderly um, since the pandemic happened. Um, but I know that wherever I put my 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 place, um, um, and and Belize, I can't get away from it. Belize is <laughs> it for me. Um, that 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 is a place that I will be able to flourish and grow there as well. So I'm really looking forward. Like I've done research for the last three and a half years, and then I just decided um, a couple of months ago that I've just got to execute on this plan of mine. Wow, you, you that is it's amazing. Um, oh my God, I don't even know what to say. I um, don't <laughs> really took a turn <laughs> <laughs> I am oh my goodness I am beyond words right now um I am I am beyond words um I am as well for the first time I'm really completely beyond don't know what to say I am very um I'm very willing and able to help you figure out your relocation and I, I hope that you find a home in Belize you know, as the first Belizean to welcome you to the whole crew. So um, <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be great. And 2021 will be here before you know it. And you will be in Hamburgers Key or any of the other locations you're considering. Um, but it's, it's a wonderful tell country. You something. I can't wait to tell you something offline that is going to just crack you up. Are you um, serious? I'm serious, but, and I'll tell you why, because, um, when we talk about purpose and passion, um, sometimes you just know, and when you know, as you begin to act on yeah. it, as you begin to move on it, then the confirmation, so sometimes people, and, and it's, it's different. And I talk about it in my book because Sometimes you get the confirmation at the beginning, mm -hmm. but there are other times that you get the confirmation only after you just believe and you start to move. Yeah. And then as you go, as you go, you start mm -hmm. getting the confirmation. You start getting the, yep, yeah, that's it. Yep, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I've just went so Okay, here I, I don't mind to I I'll tell you on the show. Here's the funny okay. part about that. Okay. I have I have been to Belize here only. Oh Michelle. 
for the last three and a half years, I have been oh. there here. And I cannot shake it. I cannot move away from it. Um, I met because a guy. Because it's for you. I met a guy in Maryland. Um, um, and I was um, helping his family with something, an older gentleman. And we started talking just like, and as we were talking, um, I shared with him that I was researching a country that I wanted to move to, and it yeah. was Belize. And he said, oh, my God, that's where I'm from. <laughs> and, my, and, my, and my son is there and is a builder and will help you get your house built, will show, you know. And I lost contact what? completely with him. And that was like three years ago. And so here we are. Okay. And I, I've just, I've just kept moving, kept saying, this is what I'm going to do. This is the way I'm moving. We got four minutes, so we got to wrap it up. But I just <laughs> believe that when you, when you move forward and when you know, that's when you are in your purpose and that's Absolutely. when it becomes something that propels you. And so if I could Absolutely. encourage anybody on anything don't wait for the affirmation or the confirmation. Just mm -hmm. go and do. And yes, you'll tweak it. Yes, you'll work on it. Yes, it won't be perfect. You know, all of that kind of stuff. But move toward it and you will begin. Because I do believe that layer upon layer will be revealed as you move. You couldn't handle the complete vision and the purpose that God has for you today anyway. It would blow exactly. your mind. You would get You're all not ready and mess it up. <laughs> so let those layers unfold so that you can walk into your purpose in a greater way than you've ever, ever, ever imagined. And with that, we have three minutes and I have nothing else left to say. Michelle, this has been an honor and a pleasure speaking with you. I can't wait to continue this conversation offline because I'm so curious to know who this builder was. Belize is literally this big. So we all know each other anyway, but I'm so happy to have spoken to you today. Thank you for sharing and imparting your wisdom with us. Um, does anyone have any last questions? You have two minutes and then I will shut up. <laughs> Let's see, I think. I think all the questions are out. Michelle, it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much. If you're ever interested in being back on, please, please, please. You know, it's only a word, a text, a message, a bird call. I don't care. Whatever it is. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, beautiful. I appreciate it as well. Thank you. And have a good evening. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.